everyone this is three questions with josh stamper you got music man love it All right, Josh, it's awesome having you the podcast. Actually, uh, you're in Frisco ISD, and uh, I'm going to preemptively, because I know a lot of people in Frisco ISD, give him a little shout out. <laughs> so your superintendent, Mike Waldrip, awesome, awesome gentleman, awesome. such an incredible staff. And uh, Josh, before I start asking you questions, uh, you have a new book. It's actually, it was released today, correct? Yes, and I get to celebrate with my good friend, George Kirov. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Book, book in hand. <laughs> Sorry to leave. I love it. And congratulations. We're going to actually have a longer podcast uh, about it. Just, But I'm going to do it before. I'm going to give you, instead, instead of doing three questions, I'm going to give you like a 30 second, like what is Aspire to Lead about? We're going to yes. talk more about it in the other podcast, but just 30 seconds. What do you got? All right. So it's essentially my journey from art teacher to administrator. And it is an acronym, Aspire. So it's activate, support, persevere identity, reflection, and execution. And it's really just a model to help aspiring leaders navigate through the pitfalls of leadership. All right, and I'm gonna use the, the, this button. <laughs> I got all the sounds, man. So, hey, check it out in the description down below. And as I said, we're gonna have another podcast that's coming out after this one that will be uh, more talking about the book, Josh's role as an assistant principal. But Josh, I, I've met you. I know you're a very inspiring person. I know a lot of people look up to you. So when you think about your uh, educational career, who is a teacher that you think of that inspired you and why? Yeah, it's someone who actually was the reason I'm probably talking to you today. Mrs. Lurch, she was my art teacher. So at the time, I thought school was ridiculous. I did not care to even attend, but just kind of went and did the very little amount of work possible to just kind of scrape by. And she was one teacher that pulled me aside many times to tell me how much I had as far as ability as a person and as an art student. And she just loved on me. She held me to the fire as far as accountability. And she constantly was commu communicating with my family about the good things and the bad. And she really invested in me. And there weren't too many folks that really um, did that for me in my education journey. A lot of people just assumed that I was lazy, um, that I didn't have the skills to be successful. And, and although I didn't give her much at first, she never gave up on me. This is this is one of the things I think is actually like quite important when you when you talk about this, is that idea of like when we talk about relationships all the time in education, I think that's a really important thing. People kind of just see it as like a lovey dovey, uh, you know, thing that, you know, is just about making someone feel good and something like that. But I think it's really kind of that connection of like how we, you know, have that ability to push one another to actually challenge people. And that does build a relationship. And the thing that I will say this, and anyone who listens to this podcast, you probably heard me say this a million times. Um, you have to build a, a space where people feel that when you push them, that they, they also got your back, right? And I think a lot of times sure. if you, um, you know, this balance of pressure and support, if you pressure people too much without supporting them, they tend to like wilt under that pressure. But if you support them too much without, you know, giving some pressure, they tend to see what you're doing is not really valid. And I think that's something that that's really important. And, and is it Mrs. Lurch, is that what you yeah. said? Yeah, Lurch. Mrs. Lurch. Yeah. All right, Mrs. Lurch, you get the special from Josh, even though I don't know if you're listening to this podcast, you get the shout out. All right. Okay, so you are currently assistant principal, correct? And you've been doing that for four years? So I've been doing I, it for eight, yeah, but four oh, in my district, yeah. Oh, wow, eight years. And yeah. I actually, one of my favorites, I always say this with assistant principals, I love being an assistant principal uh, because I feel you have like a ton of, of opportunity to make things happen. But if you screw up, everyone blames the principal. <laughs> That's kind of how it goes. Nice little middle ground. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so like when you think of, you know, your role as an administrator, and then you think about all the administrators that you experience, whether as a student, you know, as a colleague, um, you know, as a teacher, like who's someone that you think about who inspired you and why? Oh, that's easy. Sanja Pegram. She is still today my mentor. She, I got to work with her at two different campuses for about six, six years. And she is just a phenomenal leader. She 
from day one said that her door was open to me if I wanted that opportunity. And of course I had to get out of my classroom and knock on the door to get those mm -hmm. experiences, but she lived by that mantra and it didn't matter who it was on a campus. If they wanted leadership experience, she was one that would bring you into any setting, um, allow you to experience it, allow you to fail. Um, and then kind of work with that as far as giving some feedback, some reflection on your practices and what would be better. She's amazing at that. She actually is a contributing author to my book um, because I felt it was really important for her to speak words about mentorship, mm -hmm. um, not only for those who want to be mentored, but on the other side of it, when you're a leader yourself that are mentoring young aspiring leaders, like what you need to do to make sure that they have the skills to be successful when they're in that same seat. Yeah. And that, like when you're, when you're talking about that mentorship process, I find that like a really great mentor and it kind of sounds like, you know, that's Sonia's, Sonia's role and, and shout out Sonia. <laughs> so when you have that opportunity, I think a lot of times people perceive that as like Sonia's like saying like, here's what you need to do. And like, and kind of like micromanaging that aspect, but the reality of that, maybe sometimes there is that aspect sometimes. of like, sometimes like, Hey, like, this is what you need to do in this situation, mm -hmm. uh, because it's totally new to you, but it is really helping that, you know, people find out how to actually figure out that process yourself, because the, the, the purpose of mentorship is not to tell you what to do. It's to help you figure out what to do yourself, right. Yeah. In long term. So I think that that is, uh, inspiring. That's awesome that you have, uh, Sonia actually writing a part of the book you said, yeah, she's so, got like, a contribution. Yeah. What, what, it, what was, can you remember her? I know that, you know, I know when you write a book, there's a lot of things going on in your mind, but like, do you remember what she shared about in, in, yeah. in the book? Yeah. So it's actually a story about our relationship and, and how hungry I was at the time and how I got the nickname office rat. And although that doesn't sound right. <laughs> very endearing, it right. actually was. And I think uh, it's a Disney movie. Office rat. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, but it was, it was the idea that no matter what time of day, like if I had an off period, if it was before school, after school, but during my lunch, even I was up in the front office and I was hungry to try and experience everything I possibly could. And so, um, she wrote about kind of that on, as far as her perspective. And then of course, like the things that she was trying to do in a mentorship role to make sure that I was being successful and. You know, I shared a lot of stories too in that chapter specifically about like what she allowed me to do. And <laughs> I can think of a, a story right. of when I was really hungry of taking on the discipline of, of situation. And she was trying to give me a little advice about the parent. I was like, oh, no, no, I got this. And, you know, being a little prideful in that of like, let me right. show you what I can do and call the parent. And of course, that conversation went sideways really fast. And um, after I got done, she, <laughs> of course, was like, how did it go? And she already knew right, that right. It, it went very, very uh, poorly. And then, of course, walked me through like what I could have said differently in that conversation. Right. And she allowed me to trip up and and fail in that moment, knowing that, of course, it wasn't something huge. She could, of course, help and clean that yeah. up and, and give me the, the lesson within that. And I, I love that part of the story, but I want to I want to go back one part. And I think this is good advice because I know a lot of people that listen to this are either um, aspiring administrators, uh, you know, or maybe, you know, wanting to go into different roles and that notion that you were kind of just out there, you know, being present and being, uh, you know, just kind of like before you had that opportunity, you were showing that you had the ability to do it. Right. Yes. And I think that, that to me is really important. I remember, uh, right before I became an administrator, uh, my first year, my literally my first day, we met superintendents at the school district, which which tells me a lot about this school district I worked in is that I didn't like wait years or get into trouble to meet a superintendent. They like welcomed all the new staff. They were there for that. And I remember I actually went to go one of the associate superintendents and I said, Hey, look, I'm really good with technology stuff. And, uh, I would love to actually have the opportunity to lead, um, some initiatives at the school district level. So if you ever need anything, please let me know. Mm -hmm. And within a week of being in this district, I was already getting called to central office to do stuff because I had actually, you know, went to that space. And I think kind of the moral of the story, for lack of a better term, is that when you show that you can lead before you're asked to do it, that's what makes effective leaders. That's what, you know, really, and that really started opening up doors for me because 
it wasn't, I wasn't at, I wasn't getting paid extra or anything like that. I just, I wanted to progress in my career and I had showed the initiative uh, to do that. And it led to, you know, a lot of great opportunities. So, mm -hmm. uh, and awesome. I'm glad, uh, I hope Sonia gets get to listen to this uh, as well. And I appreciate uh, that the shout out. So last question, and you, you, you've done a ton of learning. I've connected with you um, over the years. So when you look back at the beginning of your career, you know, what, what advice would you give to yourself as a first year teacher? Well, I know a lot of people get the advice of don't be seen or heard for about three years until you actually understand what you're doing. Hmm. And that's far from the truth. I think, I think new teachers have a lot of brilliant ideas and I think their voice is valid. In addition, don't be afraid to ask questions. I think that was the thing that helped me the most was I understood that I had a mentor teacher and I understood that there were people on my team that I could ask. And although it was uncomfortable to show that you didn't know something on the campus, it was extremely valuable to get that their information and their perspective and learn through that. Similar to the mentorship piece of trying to get into admin, you need to make sure that you're asking the questions and it doesn't matter if it's a thousand questions, it probably will be. It's okay to ask and get that knowledge because if you if you don't know something, you're, the expectation is still there for you to get it done. And so it's important to try and learn as quickly as possible. And yes, it does take multiple years for you to feel comfortable and to feel like you've mastered the curriculum, the classroom management piece. I mean, there's a lot of components to teaching, but it's extremely valuable to keep getting knowledge and seeking. The, 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 so like, I actually, you, you kind of triggered something in my head that I, I saw on Twitter one day and I wasn't really impressed with it. I'll be honest. Yeah. Someone's like, you know, if you haven't been in the profession for at least 10 years, you shouldn't be giving advice, blah, blah, blah. And it was kind of crapping on people. I'm like, really? Is that like, is that what you're saying to a new, new teacher that's coming to your district? Like you have no value until you hit this mark, right? Like you hit this point. As opposed to saying like, Hey, everyone, you know, brings different gifts, different talents. And like, I really, you know, it's, it would be kind of, you know, on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's like, well, that 30 year teacher is not very innovative. And it's like, like, if you say that, that you're that like, you're basing it on nothing other than a perception of age, uh, a perception of, you know, um, uh, whatever. Right. And I think it's, it's actually, I look at, and I think this is really important is that when we look at new teachers coming in, I so appreciate you saying this, that they bring gifts, they bring ideas in there. And yeah, of course they don't have the experience that someone who's been teaching 30, 40, 50 years would have, but it doesn't mean they don't have ideas. It doesn't mean that they don't have talents. They don't have maybe new perspectives um, in, in that space. And so I think for me, it's like, no matter where I'm in my career, I want to be able to look and this is one of the things I love about this podcast is I've had students on now I've had teachers, you know, superintendents, you know, people outside of education. And I look at I actually learn a ton from this because I'm looking to learn. And I think that is a really important perspective. So great advice for the new teachers. But I think for the, the teachers, you know, that may like really, you know, do we, do we actually create an environment where we embrace, we encourage people to speak up because we say like, you know, we want people to have a voice, but then tend to crap on them. If, if we don't, you know, their voice might be a little too loud. It might be overshadowing us. And I think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's our opportunity to, to learn. So, uh, I really appreciate you sharing that. And I'm going to, just because you got the new book, you got the congrats, man. It's a big deal. Is this, is this your first book? Is it is my first book. Yeah. Awesome. Well, congratulations. That, that's a huge deal. And so, you. um, you can actually connect. Is it? And I, I asked before the podcast, I'm calling you Josh, but it is at Joshua underscore snapper, double so, underscore, double underscore. It is. There should be a button for double underscore. I wish there was right. So like, <laughs> I'm, I wonder, is there like a, I gotta ask this. Is there like a single underscore Josh? There Snapper? is. There is not. There is, and that's why I went double underscore. And he actually has quite a few educational followers. Due to me. <laughs> I was gonna say that's amazing. <laughs> that's incredible. I love that. All right. Hey, Josh. Thanks so much for being on. Uh, check out the book, uh, Aspire to Lead. You can see it in the links. Thanks so much for all you do, uh, and everyone. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Thanks, everybody.